Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got a ton of stuff to go over. First up, this is what everybody's talking about, so let's talk about it. The SEC is filing a lawsuit against Ripple Labs, and we're going to talk about what the complaint actually is. We're going to take a look at what people like Charles Hoskinson have to say and how Brad Garlinghouse and Ripple is responding to it, as well as what is going on in the community. Also, on the heels of the Ledger hack, the CEO of Ledger comes out and says probably the worst thing you can possibly say. And this is a textbook example of what not to do. We're going to talk about Coinbase and their issues that they're having with their customers, which is getting, in my opinion, out of control. And we'll finish it all up with probably one of the most savage things I've ever heard Michael Saylor say on Fox News. So we'll get into all that, but first let's talk about the 12 days of Christmas. Giving away a lot of great things, and today is no difference. We are giving away $200 worth of Bitcoin, thankfully, from our friends over at Unstoppable Domains. There's going to be two winners. Each will get $100 each of Bitcoin. All you have to do is write your .crypto or .zil domain in the comments below just to qualify to win. Make sure to add your Bitcoin address as is, that's the way they're actually gonna pay you. I'm not gonna pick the winner. It's gonna be Unstoppable Domains. They're gonna do that at random and I'll share a video of them actually paying that through their partner with the Coinbase wallet in my next video. Hey, that's their partner, not mine. On top of that, we had our CryptoTrader.tax winners. It was Joseph, Trisha, and Mark. CryptoTrader has already contacted them and done all that work. On top of the trading platform, Market Rebellion has picked their winner. And congratulations, it is Nick Zizox6. So Nick, do me a favor. Just go to DanTeachesCrypto.com. Click on the contact button right here. Send me an email and I will send your information over to Market Rebellion so you can have a year's free of trading information. So let's go over the market real quick. It is October 22nd at 6 p.m. at night. Trying to get things done, a lot of things going on. So here's what we got. Bitcoin's up massively. I mean, 6% a day, <laughs> it just keeps going. 24% for the week, awesome. Ethereum, 636, tethered, nobody cares. XRP, rightfully so down. Uh, Litecoin, 12%, but look at that in a seven day period, almost 50%. Congratulations, Litecoin holders. I don't hold Litecoin, and a lot of you do, so congratulations to you guys. Bitcoin Cash, I mean, let's just talk about what's down. Stellar, it's on 1%. Everything's up pretty massively. And there's one that I want to make mention of. Congratulations to Celsius for finally breaking past that $3 mark. It just seems like a couple weeks ago, we were talking about them getting past $2. And also Theta blast through a dollar. I mean, I remember when it was just like 18 cents and here we are. So congratulations to those two. Again, I'm pretty biased because I own everything I just talked about except for Litecoin. So let's do what I like to do, which is switch us over to Bitcoin to see if we just would invest in Bitcoin, how we would have done. Eh, looks like Litecoin beat us out. And Binance Coin, and Monero, and OKB, and Celsius. But not too bad, and Theta. So, and Synthetics, Synthetics, man, that thing is just uh, on a tear. So again, uh, on this one, Bitcoin holders, you probably held out and uh, did pretty well. And if you just would invest in Bitcoin, would have done pretty good. But I still think the altcoin season is coming. Just don't know when that's going to happen. All right, let's jump into today's story, which is everybody's talking about. So this is kind of big, huh? So the SEC is suing Ripple. Why? Well, it's not just about securities. That is part of it. But there's, an, there's another part to that. And really, it comes down to they feel that they were being predatory and they were preying on not the institutional investors or the credited investor. They're saying that they preyed on people who didn't know any better and that they were essentially duping them to buy into XRP because they thought, they think that people thought they were getting stocks into Ripple, which is kind of ridiculous. But there's a lot of nuances to this. And I will just preface it by this. Have you ever been sued? I have. It sucks. And I will just tell you this. The law is very fluid. It is all really about the judges that you get, the representation that you have, and how they interpret the law that is out there. There are so many nuances to it. That's why I have the utmost respect for lawyers. I know people some like, ah, I hate those lawyers. Look, they got a tough job. And uh, I depended on them uh, for a very dark period of my life. And uh, I'm forever grateful. I will just say also this, is that this lawsuit is going to take years. It is not going to be six months to a year. I think this is going to be very big, very long, very drawn out, and very expensive for Ripple. Thankfully, they have a lot of money. So this is what's going on. From at least 2013 to the present, this is what they say. Defendants sold over 14 billion units of a digital asset security called XRP in return for cash or other consideration, or $1.38 billion to fund Ripple's operation and enrich Larson and Garlinghouse. So they say here that 
The reason why it gets so shady is that Ripple never filed a registration statement, which gives people or investors information of what is going on behind the scenes. Instead, Ripple created an information vacuum such that Ripple and the two insiders with the most control over it, Larson and Garlinghouse, could sell XRP into a market that possessed only the information defendants chose to share about Ripple and XRP. So basically what they're saying is these guys were shysters and scam artists and they wouldn't tell them anything, just like, hey, this is XRP. This is what we talk about, about do your own research and uh, really look into the, into the project. So they're saying that if you were so confident about your business, why didn't you go after accredited investors or institutional investors to drive this whole force home? Why did you have to go to the retail investor to fund it to a tune of one point whatever billion dollars that they, that they got? And I'm not here to debate that. I'm just saying that's their argument. So Ripple engaged in this illegal securities offering from 2013 to now. Even though Ripple received legal advice as early as 2012 that under certain circumstances, XRP could be considered an investment contract and therefore a security under the federal securities laws. So here's what you have to take a step back and look at. There's this book called The Infinite Machine and the same thing happened to Ethereum. And their issue was with securities and they had their lawyers go over it again and again and again and again. And what they found out was the whole loophole or however you want to say it, is they said that it's not a security because it's not on us. You guys aren't getting into us and, and depending on us to build you and to make you a ton of money, how we test stuff, right? What it is, is that you are getting into Ethereum and then there's a utility called gas and you will use that for these decentralized applications and that's really what you're buying into. The way that they did it all uh, with with their lawyers and the, and the legal whole stance, at least that's one of the reasons why the SEC has never come out and said it is a security. And actually they have alluded to the fact that it is a commodity or at least not a security, I would say it like that. Bitcoin has already gotten the golden ticket as it were, and it's been labeled as not a security. It is a commodity or as a currency, however they want to state it. So it's not going to be in that realm. So that's what what the whole crux comes down to. If something is decentralized, truly decentralized, then it isn't on the backs of a third party because it's in a decentralized nature. So how could that actually happen? The other thing is Ripple claims it is a utility and it really is because when you think about it, what does it do? It really does enhance the transportation of cross-border payments. So in that respect, it is what it is. However, the SEC doesn't see it that way. And I think it's two, and really, like I said, it comes out of two things. They're talking about the security, but they're also ticked off of the fact of all these investors that came in. And there's also a lawsuit continually going on, which talks about the same thing. People were duped. They they weren't told the, 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 the truth about Ripple and XRP, and uh, they want their money back. Now, I don't see how anybody could think that you got stocks in Ripple if you bought XRP. That makes absolutely no sense to me. But um, it is one of those things, right? Uh, there's a reason why there are disclaimers on hair dryers which say, don't blow dry your hair in the shower. The reason is, is because someone did it, and they got electrocuted and sued the company. It's like you have to dumb it down for the dumbest people. Anyhow, meanwhile, Larson, Ripple's initial CEO and current chair on the board, and Garlinghouse, Ripple's current CEO, orchestrated these unlawful sales and personally profited by approximately 600 million from their unregistered sales of XRP. Garlinghouse did so while repeatedly telling that he was very long XRP, meaning he held a significant position he expected to rise in value without disclosing his sales of XRP. So there's gonna be a discussion about this in the comment section, I can feel it already. One will say, it doesn't matter, he is entitled to that and he can own that. The other side will say something like, well, look, if he is really that long, why did he sell so much of it and really dumping. It's, it'll be interesting to hear the, the conversation because as you know, I hold XRP and I will hold it until it goes down. I've always said that and that's uh, just what I believe because I'm so stubborn, that's just how it is. And in all honesty, we can debate this all day long. We really can. But what it comes down to is that this will be decided in the courts. It's gonna take a very long time. We're gonna hear about this for the next two years. The thing that concerns me is the ramifications across the entire cryptocurrency spectrum. Once you start to delve into it, and say, okay, well, this is a security. Then you start can start to apply that to other cryptocurrencies, even ones that may have been deemed uh, as a safe haven, as it were. So even people say, well, Bitcoin's safe. Well, how do you know it's safe? They could at any time come back. This will this will set precedent, and that is a dangerous thing. And I will just also preface it with this before we move on. Or some people will say this is a shit coin and it's very awful and, and no one should use it. And then some people say it's the best thing of all time. But I will remind you where you're at. This is a family. And if you feel like you should 
really get on the case of one member of your cryptocurrency family, you can do that. But just remember, we really should be getting each other's backs, whether you like them or not. I got a brother, sometimes don't really get along with him too much. He makes me super angry. But if something messes with him, they got to mess with me. And it all comes down that whole road. And I think that's how we really should be playing this in this community, because we never know what's going to happen past XRP. Will they deem it a security? Will they sort of shut things down? Will they move on and go, you know what? That's just not decentralized enough for us. We'd like to see X. And because of that, we're going to shut you down. And off you go. Again, these are just my opinions, but that's what I see. And this is actually one of the things that uh, Charles talked about. And Charles, I was just coming across his live stream as I was like, the interesting stuff. This guy must uh, not sleep because, uh, you know, being a CEO and he does a lot of live streams, I can barely do these videos and do my other businesses. It's crazy. But he said something pretty interesting here. Take a listen. The question of whether XRP is a security or not is a very interesting one. I still believe, given the facts of today, that XRP is not a security. And if, even if it was to be ruled a security, and Chris and Brad suffer consequences for that from engorgement to other things, uh, who would run the ecosystem? The system would still likely run. There would still likely be adherence. There would still likely be network traffic and consensus nodes and these types of things. So on the outset, it doesn't look like it makes much sense to apply that standard. And that just makes sense to me. I mean, some people will say, ah, there's not enough validator nodes. They have plenty of validator nodes. And I believe that if Ripple goes away, XRP will still be maintained. And that is what I believe is decentralized. And we can talk all day long about the other different uh, projects that are out there with their blockchain producers and if they are decentralized enough. So let's hear what Brad has to say about what's going on. And what's amazing to me is not a single other current country anywhere has looked at XRP as a security. You've had countries like the UK and Japan and Switzerland and Singapore all come out and say things that are make it clear that XRP is a currency. Uh, actually, one other nugget I think is interesting is even, sorry, even here in the US, the Department of Justice has viewed XRP as a currency and uh, the Department of Treasury has viewed XRP as a currency. Sorry, Kate. That's right, Brad. Kate here. Good to see you. Thanks for coming on. I want to ask you, you mentioned um, some of those exchanges. I want to ask you about the broader implications for others in the industry. Coinbase is a big name we talk about a lot. They see about 12% of their trading volume in XRP. That company is about to IPO. What would this mean to some of the global exchanges that hold XRP or facilitate trading of XRP on those exchanges? So about 95% of XRP trading happens outside the United States on exchanges around the world. And so that's outside of the United States SEC jurisdiction. For exchanges like Coinbase that are based here in the United States, one of the reasons why I view this as something that's broader than just, hey, what does this mean for Ripple and XRP? It's what does this mean for the crypto industry here in the United States? I know that XRP could really go on without Ripple. You know, if you guys sold all of your holdings of XRP, that cryptocurrency could survive would you ever consider doing that, divesting all of your cryptocurrency holdings and really focus more on your enterprise payments business? Is that something that Ripple has considered or could do? It's certainly, I think, one of the ironies of all of this is that for XRP to be a security of a company, the company has to exist. And the point that I have made at various times is that if Ripple, the company, didn't exist, XRP would still thrive around the globe with you know a couple hundred exchanges around the world. And there's over 100 different projects, innovative entrepreneurs here in the U.S. and around the world building on top of XRP. And the reason why they're doing that is because XRP is far more efficient in terms of speed, in terms of cost, to settling transactions and using it really as a currency. So again, there's going to be a lot of discussion about this, and it's going to be a long, drawn-out process. I'm not even going to pretend to know that I uh, I can understand the intricacies of what the SEC is going to come to the court with and talk about all their, their depositions and all their discovery items that they're going to ask for, as well as how much Ripple is going to push back and actually get so many briefs and documents in, in, in line just to get them into the court and actually have, have their day. It's, it's going to be such a long general process that we're going to be hearing about this for a very long time. And I, again, I would say that in the community, there's really two sides. There's <laughs> really two sides. One is they love people love XRP. They don't see it as a security. Other side is like XRP is crap. I don't want to ever ha hear about it again. I wish it would go away. But again, you have to understand where we are. We are all under that umbrella, that family umbrella 
of cryptocurrencies and digital assets. You may not like your brother or sister. Everything hits the fan. You got to be there a little bit to protect them because you never know when the next one's going to come for you. All right, let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, this is dumb. Ledger won't reimburse users after major data, data hack. Not that that's dumb, but it's the way it was said. There is a way to say things and talk about it to really minimize damage control as a company. And there's what happened here. So what happened? Ledger CEO Pascal Gauthier, I think I said that right, said today that the company will not reimburse customers who had their personal data leaked online, including those who had their home addresses revealed. We did a video about this yesterday. It was just, it was just one video because it was uh, such a big thing. If you don't know, uh, Ledger had a hack and uh, a lot of people's information is out there. It's their names, emails, uh, phone numbers, and physical addresses. So we talked about what you need to do, how you need to protect yourself. Don't worry, uh, your mnemonic phrases are safe. They can't get those. Those are generated by you through your individual nano ledger, so you are safe. But which, what is a problem is they have your cell phone numbers and your addresses. So if you uh, are worried about SIM swapping for your phone, I will leave this in the description below. Uh, you can just Google it, SIM swap fraud, how to prevent your phone from being stolen. And really it's gonna go out is how you're gonna protect yourself. The big thing is to get two-factor uh, authentication on your phone. Don't have your authentication come to your phone in a text message. That is a prime recipe for disaster. And if you can at all at, at all possible, if you're going to do 2FA like with, with a Google Authenticator, uh, if at all possible, try to get a separate phone for that. That is totally offline. This is what the CEO said. When you have a data breach of this magnitude for such a small company, we won't reimburse for a million users. All the devices, that's just not possible. It would just kill the company. Instead, we prefer to look at the future. What Ledger is doing right now is investing a lot of time and money, building the next layer of security and the next products that will bring more security to our users. This is a disaster on both fronts. First of all, it's a disaster as far as security. Second of all, it's a disaster on how this is actually being handled. This is a textbook case of what not to do. We talked about in the video how in 1982, there was a Tylenol crisis where someone was putting cyanide in Tylenol bottles and killing people. And Johnson Johnson came out and said, we're gonna step up. We don't know what happened before, but we're gonna make this right. We're gonna put on the safety caps the foil, the cotton, so they are tamper-proof. You can have 100% faith, and no one even remembers that story anymore. Do you? It was so long ago. Nothing ever happened because they handled it the right way. In this situation, they need a PR person badly. So um, I'm not going to tell them how to do it or how I would do it. I'm just saying that's not the way to do things, and uh, just be safe out there. All right, let me know what you think in the comments, but let's go. Next to last, this is what's happening in Coinbase, and I've got two messages almost 10 minutes apart. And I don't know what's going on with Coinbase, but people are losing access to Coinbase. And one person had access for four years. They took it away for whatever reason, said they couldn't verify it, and they couldn't get back in their account. It's been a week. Christmas is coming up. They've got tens of thousands of dollars in there. That would stress me out too. This was also from uh, Mike. And he says, hey, can you do an investigative piece as to what's going on? They have locked a lot of accounts. Mine's one of them. Can't buy or sell. So I'm just going to ask you in the comment section below, is this happening to you? Because when I put this onto Twitter, there was a lot of people where they said, it happened to me. It's happened to me. It's happened to me. I don't know what's going on with Coinbase. I have no idea. But over on my wallets and exchange fees, uh, they are in the red zone, which means that I don't recommend them whatsoever. An off-ramp, if you can get all your money off. But I said, as of December 1st, Coinbase has had so many issues. I recommend everyone to take their crypto off the exchange immediately. There's something going on. I don't know what it is, but I keep hearing bad stories. And where there's smoke, there is fire. Some people say, oh, it's not so bad. You can do whatever you want to. But <clears throat> I've got, I think just a couple of referral things over there and that's it uh it's like less than 200 bucks but uh, i would not recommend to keep it on there i don't know what's going on it scares me and last up i had to finish with this let's finish with some positive sucks there's so much negativity michael sailors is savage savage first of all he wanted fox news which is the perfect demographic to go on if you're trying to get people with money to understand about Bitcoin, look, Boomer's got all the money. And who watches a lot of Fox News? Boomers. So when he went on there, I thought this is perfect. And what he says right here is just fantastic. If you are into stocks and bonds and gold, you saw this, you just dropped a load in your diaper. Take a listen to this. Michael, uh, from 2011 to 2020, 
Bitcoin rallied 6,271,233% or annualized 203% annualized to 2.2% for gold. Underscoring your point, but also making people wonder just how much more room is there to the upside? I mean, I've heard targets of a million. Look, first of all, it's not a rally. It's not a bubble. It's a chain reaction spreading like a fire in cyberspace. And it's being driven, it's driving the flow of conventional assets because of escalating risk of global currency devaluation, tech disruption, social dislocation, political uncertainty. So if you're a corporation and you're sitting with US dollars on your balance sheet, they're liabilities. You're gonna lose 15% of your purchasing power against scarce assets every year for the next five years. It's like a melting ice cube. Bitcoin, as you pointed out, is going up more than 100% a year. So the logical thing for every corporation to do is convert their balance sheet from USD to BTC. And the answer to your question is, Bitcoin's going to demonetize gold, negative yielding sovereign debt, low yielding sovereign debt, and all of the index funds that are being used as a store of value. There's 100 to $200 trillion worth of stuff there. This thing can go on for quite a while. Savage. 100 to $200 trillion that is there. If you are a CEO a CFO, a CIO, or whatever kind of EO or IO, whatever you are, in a, in a corporation, and you just heard that, would you be like, wait, what? What is going on? Who is this? Michael Saylor? Michael Strategy? What's that? Bitcoin. I heard of that. How's that doing? What? They dropped a billion dollars into Bitcoin uh, as of August, and now they're up, what? 1.668 billion? Maybe we should look into that. I don't know. And it's the same thing that's going on around the horn. I mean, look... Even Scaramucci, the mooch, was on uh, CNBC, and he said the exact same thing. We're starting up a Bitcoin trust. He's he's part of a billion-dollar Bitcoin fund now. And if there's anybody who's got inside connections, it's probably the mooch. And he's pretty much saying this. Look, we're in the first inning. It's going to be huge. We want to get in front of this before everybody jumps in. We are early. So when I see stuff like this, it almost makes me want to FOMO, sell my house and my kidneys, and get a couple more Bitcoin. All right, so that's it for today. So again, don't forget, uh, the giveaway is uh, going to be tomorrow. It's going to be drawn by Unstoppable Domains. Make sure you put your Unstoppable Domain .crypto or .zil with your Bitcoin public address, not your private address, private keys or anything like that, public Bitcoin address in the in the comments below with your Unstoppable Domain uh, .crypto or .zil. And uh, Zaji over there at Unstoppable Domains will draw it and send it over to me and I will announce it manana. So anyhow, thanks for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you like these types of videos, give me two more. It's going to pop up on uh, your left and right. YouTube does its magic and off we go. So I uh, appreciate it and I'll see you on the next one.